the enterprise system model. That's a great improvement over what we have seen previously because of several things. One, you have one system now supporting the whole process from start to end. So there is no interruption. You have uh, data entered once, stored in one central database. So when we have the data entered only once, so you have, we, we have what we call one version of the truth. One version of the truth. I'm going to write it right beside the, the central database so that you remember it. The previous model that we had, where we have different information systems, you cannot say that you still have the one version of the truth. Now you have these different systems, a lot of times uh, sales will tell you one thing and accounting will tell you something else. Uh, sales will say we have sold that much and accounting will say, oh, but we have a lot of uh, returns, for example, so that's not really all revenue. Um, but with things with Pulling information and reporting from just one central database with one uh, set of data create only one version of the truth. So there is no way that there is inconsistency between sales or the warehouse or the warehouse and the accounting and so on. So that, that, that's one advantage. The second is that you don't have any delays. You have a streamline of the operation. As soon as sales enter the data inside of the central database, warehouse is automatically notified by the system. So warehousing knows that they need to send as soon as sales submit the order. So they start working on packaging and shipping uh, right away. There is no delay. They don't have to re-enter data or anything like that. As soon as they ship, accounting can start their job and charge the, the customer. So again, you have streamlining of the operation. You have a support, and that's because one system is supporting the process from start to end, integrating and co coordinating among the different uh, functions. Each department knows exactly or is notified as soon as their work or their step or their activity uh, is or need to be started. Um, so, th this is one central database cause one version of the truth. You have consistency, data consistency. You don't have these different conflicting information among the different departments. Everyone is pulling from one database. You have a streamlining of uh, the operation. Uh, there is coordination among the different uh, departments. So you have, of course, I mean, people can say that will reduce cost, that will increase productivity, it will require less resources because you have a lot of automation being done. Now you don't have to notify anyone, the system automatically uh, notifies them. So all of these are uh, advantages that you see in uh, enterprise systems. Now, what would be the advantage uh, to an executive at the top of the organization? Um, now, the executive, of course, have greater visibility of what's going on. So they can see right away from an enterprise perspective, not from a particular department, but from the whole enterprise, where the organization stands. And as you will see, I mean, towards the end of the semester, we work with um, OLAP, online analytical processing uh, tools, and you can see how there is, um, or executives can have a multi-dimensional view. 
So they, ha they, they see, they look at sales, but from so many different dimensions, um, from a geographic perspective, from time perspective, from a product or manufacturing perspective, and so on. So um, the, the benefit to an executive is that they have now a better visibility of the whole uh, of the status of the organization and of the whole process. If they are, if this is an executive responsible for purchasing, for example, they can get reports on the efficiency of the process. Uh, they can uh, get visibility or details about the particular activity within the process. So you have uh, better control of uh, processes, business processes. Um, again, when we start the uh, the, doing the exercises, you will see that uh, there is also a lot of control embedded within the system. So the system has a lot of, uh, what, what do we mean by a lot of control? Which means the system prevents you from doing things that are not productive or are not correct. So you cannot override the system. So let's say we enter the sales order. Now the system will make sure that the warehouse sends the products that are on the order. They cannot sell anything, so if a product is out of stock, then I can send something else. That's not possible. The system makes sure that whatever is sent is exactly what has been ordered, which again results in a better customer service. Now, again, in accounting, the system makes sure that the accounting is charging the customer for the amount agreed on the sales order. So if there is a discount, then the system would automatically take that discount. I said a, a very good control is that um, salespeople have certain authorization. So you can authorize them to give up to 20% discount, and then they cannot, they cannot override the system. The system is set, or their profile is set to where they can only give up to 20% discount. So again, that would prevent fraud, would, would prevent um, unethical behavior. If, if you have, for example, a salesperson trying to sell to their relatives, cousins, and so on, <laughs> the system will prevent them uh, from giving like 60% discount or something like that. You have to be, of course, at a specific level um, to allow, or, and also you have to document why are you giving that high of a discount. Okay. So now you have better understanding of the process from start to end. Uh, as an employee, you know exactly how your part or set of activities affect the whole process. What do you really need to do in order to um, let the process flow? And um, what are the failures or what failures uh, would cause again would, or would block the system. Now, you also, you, we can see that you have three types of uh, flows going on in the enterprise information system. There is what's happening in the physical environment. So, um, an actual call from a customer requesting uh, order of specific products or um, an online order, so someone physically sitting on the computer placing an order, that order being submitted into the ERP system, physical products being packaged, physical products being shipped, and then accounting department physically charging uh, the customer credit uh, card. But we also have data flowing throughout the process. So um, with the entrance of the customer order, we have information about what products they need, what quantity, um, the price that is uh, on the order, any discounts. Um, and then there is new data that is being uh, collected. So you have, um, again, your net... Uh, um, or the total, uh, the total portion of sales, and, and then your net after taxes, for example. Uh, we have um, 
an update of inventory. So we have now a different amount uh, for the particular product in inventory. We have to reduce the amount by the amount that we have already shipped. We have a status of an order. Order is either in process or already shipped. And we also have, so that's the data and document flow. Well, the documents, we have several documents in every single process. You have several documents that are being created. So in sales, we have a sales order. We have um, several shipping um, documents, one to release goods out of the inventory, one to package them, and one to ship. And then we have the financial uh, documents at the end for charging the customer and again um, receiving payment uh, for uh, the product. The information flow is also something that you get out of the system and it's specifically helpful for mid, middle uh, and upper level management. So middle level management can look and see sales um, for a particular quarter or a particular month. Uh, they can look at their most valuable customers. Uh, they can look at uh, products that have high demand or products that are, have very low demand. Executive at the top can also uh, make decisions based on which products shall I discontinue, which markets shall I focus more on because, uh, or which category of customers um, should I uh, give more discount to entice and motivate them to um, to do uh, to say to, to buy from us. 